It's called in the name demonic of the Father, Spirit. and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Every nation is very much concerned with the Church in our times, and most of them have made sociological surveys. We spent close to $500,000 on a sociological survey. We were trying to discover the moods and attitudes of the American priests. All we ended up with was really a few additional decimal points, because we generally knew what was wrong. And furthermore, sociological surveys do not touch the essence of the problem, nor do national surveys. We are not American priests, we are not Philippine priests, we are not German priests, we are Christ priests. Where we are is quite secondary. More important still, The crisis that we are going through is not peculiar to your country or to mine. Germany has it. Africa has it. Europe has it. Every country in Europe. If, therefore, we are suffering from a crisis that is affecting the priesthood, the attitude toward faith, we cannot ever say that it's national. That is why these national surveys are not really profound. If, therefore, the trouble is international, everywhere, there must be some other cause than that which we unearth in our surveys. There has to be a supra national cause of the crises in the world today. And that supra-national cause is the demonic. The devil in our age has been given a long rope. Whenever there is an outpouring of the spirit, there is also an outpouring of the satanic. When Moses worked miracles, the magicians of Pharaoh simulated a few of them. With Pentecost, there was the martyrdom of Stephen. With the Vatican Council and the descent of the Spirit upon the Council, then there began to be the spread of the demonic in the world. We never hear about the demonic from our own spiritual writers. In fact, there's a book for sale out there that I have read in which there is no mention of hell, no mention of Satan, though it is a discussion on the last things. The moral theologians have dropped the satanic. Who talks about it? The poets. psychiatrists and the scriptures. First poets, they're always ahead of the times. By poets, I do not mean popular poets. I mean those deep and profound thinkers who really are prophets. They seem to see what is coming. Though Nietzsche was not a poet, He's here classified. He wrote a poem when there was a young man about the passion of our Lord, which was very beautiful. He was a great musician, friend of Wagner, and after he had written his book on the Antichrist, he was went mad, thumping the keys, shouting against the person of Christ, and the next eleven years lived as a madman until he died. But he makes a madman say that God is dead. 
A madman says it. And the madman asks, what made us strong enough to kill God? It is not denying, it is killing God. Will all the waters of the ocean cleanse us from that guilt? How can we wipe our sword of his blood? The only way that we can ever overcome the killing of God is to by making a new God. And the madman says, the time is not yet. And this was at the end of the 18th century. But he will come. And in the last latter part of that book of Nietzsche, the madman falls silent. And I looked at his hearers again. They too were silent. At last he threw his lantern on the ground. It broke into pieces and went out. I come too early. It is not yet my time. This monstrous event is still on the way. It has not yet penetrated men's ears. Lightning and thunder need time. The light of the stars needs time. Deeds need time, even after they've been done, in order to be seen and heard. The deed is further from men than some stars, and yet they have done it. Auden, the English poet, draws his inspiration from the Anabasis of Xenophon and writes not about the going up, but of the catabasis. Heroic charity is rare. Without it, what except despair can shape the hero who will dare the desperate catabasis into the snarl of the abyss that always lies just underneath the jolly picnic on the heath of the agreeable. And then this oft-quoted poem of William Butler Yeats. Things fall apart. The center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood-dimmed tide is loosed, and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack all conviction. while the worst are filled with passionate intensity. Surely some revelation is at hand. Surely the second coming is at hand. The second coming. Hardly are those words out when a vast image out of Spiritus Mundi troubles my sight. Somewhere in the sands of the desert a shape with a lion body, pitiless as the sun, is moving its slow thighs, while all about it real shadows of the indignant desert birds. The darkness drops again, but now I know that twenty centuries of stony sleep were vexed to nightmare by a rocking cradle. And what rough beast its hour come round at last, slouches toward Bethlehem to be born. You've been listening to Venerable Fulton Sheen. This was back in the 60s or 70s. It's called The Demonic Today. And uh, he's given us a lot of fodder for conversation, Dan. There's a lot of things that jump out at me. Uh, what are some of the things that you want to explore from what Fulton Sheen says right now? Uh, Dan, what jumps out at you? Yeah, um, <clears throat> what's interesting is is how spot on he is speaking what he saw at that time as now becoming manifest in in today's church and today's society. We're seeing that that you know as he kind of did a little exegesis on the the Gerasene demoniac, naked, unchained, schizophrenic, um, unable to be bound. His inner person is dis- is a description of what's happening both to humanity 
to the church, to our society, society. to culture. Yeah. 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 The society is, you know, nakedness, you know, uh, biblically speaking, to uncover one's nakedness um, is, is in, in Old Testament terminology, it's a, a euphemism for uh, illicit sexuality. Um, you know, or, you know, there's, there's all kinds of symbolic meanings in Scripture as well for nakedness, um, lack of protection, lack of proper clothing, etc. Um, think of nakedness also in terms of the the symbolism that we receive in baptism. We're, you know, we're we're getting more and more unbaptized and more and more uh, unsacramentalized as as a as a human race. In fact, Dan, less got people the music. Are, yeah, hear the music. Less people are receiving the sacrament of baptism. I say, I read that the numbers are way way down. Listening to Jesus 911, we're talking about the demonic today with Fulton She with Dan Schneider. We'll be right back. In 1 Corinthians 13 13, St. Paul says, So there abide faith, hope, and love these three. According to St. Ignatius of Antioch, faith is the beginning and love is the end, and God is the two of them brought into unity. Then comes everything else that makes up a Christian. May God grant that we may attain all the virtues that make for authentic followers of His Son. How does the baby eat? Can the baby hear me? How did the baby get in there? Wow, a pregnancy can sure generate a lot of questions, but what's important is that a baby is a baby, inside and out of the womb, not just after birth, but nine months before, at conception. That's right, every baby is a miracle. Hello, my name is Marianne Kuharski. I'm the director of Pro-Life Across America. If you know someone who is pregnant or in need of alternatives or assistance or would like to support the work of Pro-Life Across America, please visit our website at prolifeacrossamerica.org or better yet, simply dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say the key word pro-life. Pro-Life Across America is non-political and totally educational. A baby's heart is beating 18 days from conception. Pro-Life Across America. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show, and they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Soul Patrol, Jesus 911. What do we mean by that? We mean Jesus is our only help. Lord, come to our assistance. I'm here with Dr. Dan Schneider. He's an expert on spiritual warfare. Uh, Fulton Sheen gave us a lot of food for thought. Dan, the Romans had several... Uh, several formations, Roman legionnaires, when they fought. What type of formation do you see the church uh, utilizing today symbolically? Where are we at? Yeah, the, 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 the primary formation of the Roman legion was the Aches, um, w- which means a line uh, where they would line up in battle. The Roman, the Roman military system was like a, it was like an infantry buzzsaw. Anything that it would work through, they were so disciplined. They were, they were the most disciplined force in the world. They would take take on forces far greater than themselves when they stayed in formation and fought under complete and absolute discipline and loyalty to one another. And then um, if they were coming across a place where there was uh, heavy fire, artillery fire, you know, arrows and other things, they would fall into testudo where they would go shield over shield and they would walk painfully slow. No one left this formation. You have shields over the head, shields to the side, shields to the front, shields to the back. And then the final formation, if the ranks broke, which didn't happen very often, but when the ranks broke um, and the, the legions were scattered, 
the 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 the, the, the ranking uh, centurion would call Orbis to whoever was in the area. And an Orbis, as we get the word orb or circle, they would form a circle at a defensible high ground. They would find a high spot that they could defend, preferably, um, and they would form a circle. They would put the wounded officers uh, uh, in, 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 in the middle of that circle. And once the centurion gave the battle, I mean the command of battle to, to Orbis, that meant they fought to the death. They, they defended what was inside to the death and they fought to the very end. They held that spot of ground. Um, and they knew that that command was, it was it was to live or die on that hill, and 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 I think as, as you kind of listen to Fulton Sheen reflect today, um, we're really we're kind of at that point. The lay the, the the lay the lay warriors out there need to to form that orbis, our families with one another. We we have to start fighting shield over shield and and realize that we're we're in a really bad place right now as a church and as a culture. And the only thing that's going to pull us out of it is 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 prayer, discipline, going back to the very basics of the Catholic faith. Dan Fulton Sheen said something. I love that military analogy. I could just, I'm picturing it all right now, thinking about uh, the movie The Gladiator, thinking about the movie uh, uh, 300, the other movie. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, I'm just saying all these formations, these Roman, and, and I'm just saying, yeah, this is where the church is right now. We've got to have, uh, we've got to find our own Orbis, uh, those people that, and the Roman soldiers, I'm looking at the Orbis formation on the internet. They all had their back to each other. I mean, that, I think that's where the word comes from. I got your back. Literally, yeah. The, they were all the back military, to back. the military term that get that carried over, and it was a police law enforcement term that get carried over into into the modern military because of the house to house and the light intent, the nature of light intensity conflict, urban warfare. Um, you know, this I have your six, I've got your six, meaning, and I've said that before. The very first exorcism I went into with the priest who was obviously nervous, and I said, Father, I got your six. Don't worry. We've got your six. Your team is here. And he looked at me, of course, non-military, uh, non-law enforcement background. He looked at me. He said, what does that mean? <laughs> and I said, well, you know, 12, 3, 9, 6 behind you. You can't see what's behind you, but I can. And so, you know, this military formation, remember, let's, let's not forget, uh, in, the, in the language of the church, in the ecclesial language of the church, we're the church militant. And... Um, you know, not the church somnolent, right? The church asleep, mm-hmm. um, the church, the church that does ballet. No, this is the church militant. We have to, we have to kind of resurrect some of these terms uh, to to understand the spiritual battle that we're up against. To get to get I'll serious like to, about it. Yeah, amen, Dan. I'll tell you something that Fulton Sheen said here. He was saying this back in the sixties and seventies. He said this: We generally knew what the problem was. He's talking about it, he, every age is concerned with the church in our times. We generally knew what the problem was. Uh, he says, sociological and national surveys do not touch the essence of the problem. Then he said that the crisis of the church, he says, there's a supranatural cause of the problem. It's the demonic. We lean too yeah. much on sociology, you know, psychiatry and psychology. He says, the problem is that we have denied the existence of the diabolical he was saying this 40, 50 years ago, Dan. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, one of one of the the, the the I forget who said it was, uh, uh, but said I think it was John Paul II. But he said that the one of the greatest devil's greatest lies is to convince us that he doesn't exist. And so we we have, or the other extreme is once you recognize he's existed, we spend so much time t- focusing on on the devil and not focusing on Christ and how we defeat the devil and how he has already been defeated. Um, but we just need to know how to fight. I'll give you an example. When I was a younger man, I, I was I was a tough guy. Um, now I'm a soft old guy, you know. But I was a tough guy, and I, and I was I was hanging out at the gyms. I was hanging out at this one particular gym. On one side of it was a really raunchy bar that you never want to go into. On the other side of it was a strip club. In between is a boxing gym. That's where the great gyms are, as you know. The best gyms yeah, are in the worst right. neighborhoods. Exactly. I was I, I, I was going in with a guy that, was, that had a shot at Tyler. He was ranked 10th in the world. He was a tough guy. He was a really good fighter. And I was a, a good amateur. Come, you know, I, I was disciplined. I was a good fighter. Um, I got into ring with this guy, and this was the day I realized I had no professional career because – it was almost as if he could read my mind. He anticipated my moves. It, I mean, I must have, I mean, a slight little wiggle of the wrist, a slight little turn of the right toe. He could read and he would be behind me. It was like he was teleporting. And I wanted to say, hey, man, stop that. Let me at least throw a punch. You know, he would make me miss so bad. The difference between a, a world-class fighter and an am, a good amateur fighter is that. I mean, this guy wasn't even a world champ. He was, he was 10th in the world. He was a world-ranked contender, but he wasn't even a world champ. 
and he and he had speed and skills far beyond mine. In the spiritual realm, we got to understand that we're dealing with the diabolic. The difference between how angels appropriate knowledge and how we appropriate knowledge, the difference between our intellect, which is filtered through the flesh and the senses and the angelic knowledge who who receive. We look at universals, St. Thomas says, um, and we 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 draw by analogy through universals. The angels look at the very essence of the individual parts and know every aspect about it, every every accidental part of a universal. What does this mean? It means they have a complete and total knowledge of cr- other created things through what he, what Thomas calls an innate species. Through an innate look, they understand completely, and they can communicate one to another through through what what Thomas calls what we call we refer to it as projection, but illumination. And so the diabolic, this faculty doesn't leave them. This is not like we're up against number 10 in the world. We're up against uh, fallen angels that are far, far superior, that have powers far superior to ours. And there's only one way. There's only one way that you can defeat this this guy in the ring that we're up against. And, And Christ has given us the way. It's through sacrifice. We see this again and again and again, working with cases of diabolic possession and obsession. It's that making sacrifices. This is something that breaks the diabolic matrix. This is the only time our punches get through the enemy is when we offer our sacrifices. We make ourselves, as uh, as St. Paul says, a living, make our bodies a living sacrifice. Um, St. Peter refers to it as well in, in, in 2 Peter, that we are a holy temple offering sacrifices, spiritual sacrifices to God. This is what it's going to take. We become, we defeat him with the weapons of Christ. And this is what the world, the modern church doesn't want to hear. We have to go back to this understanding of offering and sacrifice. And this is how, in the economy of grace, how things flow into the world. So, you know, how do I pray for this person or that person who's afflicted in my family? Um, yeah, there's great prayers that we can do. The the, the book, uh, the deliverance prayers are used by the laity. There's some great resources out there. But at the end of the day, the old weapons are, are very powerful. Praying, praying the rosary, offering sacrifices, um, having masses said for those, the ultimate sacrifice, uniting our prayers with the suffering of Christ, particularly re- when he's on the altar at Holy Mass. This is deep waters, mystical uh, Catholicism, but this is the, what the saints have discovered and how they defeated Satan through their bodies. Um, and that is through through becoming a living sacrifice. And this is this is this is how we can fight. This is the only way that we can compete in the ring. As again, as I learned as I learned the hard way growing up, some guys are just far superior to us in the ring. They're just they're just better gifted guys, uh, physically, spiritually. The only way we can defeat the the real the real yoked out MMA fighters in the spiritual realm are wearing wearing a head covering. They're going to daily mass. They don't they sit in the back of the church and they these little old ladies. That 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 these are the ones that are that this is the this is the 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 lock uh, what's his name Brock Lesnar, and these other huge joked out massive MMA guys. This is what it looks like on on the spiritual realm. Learning how to pray like a warrior, learning how to stand in the gap through your life, making your body a, a living sacrifice. Not trying to go toe to toe with the guy intellectually, but learning to suffer with, through, in, and for Jesus Christ. Dan, and this is the opposite of what's taught, again, like the Pentecostals, you know, everything for them is healing, healing. God wants you healed. Come over here. Let me lay my hand on you. And God wants no, God wants nobody to suffer the whole health and wealth gospel, which is false. It's a false gospel. They they don't take into account Colossians 124, where, where St. Paul tells us that we're called to unite our sufferings with Christ, offering our sufferings united with Christ on the cross. And as you said before, I've heard you say this many times is that when we offer, when we intentionally offer our sufferings to Christ for ourselves and for others, this becomes, uh, it's not understandable to demons because I guess demons would say like, why would, why would they, why would they want to suffer for somebody else that doesn't compute? And so what we're doing then as we're offering this old school Catholic pious practice, when we offer our sac- ourselves as a sacrifice to God, we're forcing the demon become to become the instrument of our sanctification yes or, or our salvation and and that that screws up their their way of thinking it, it doesn't compute to them they're saying what because they don't want to cooperate in making somebody holy because they're all about non-servium I will not serve so when we enter into that Catholic monastic practice it 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 uh, it's something that again it doesn't compute with them. 
and and we're forcing them to to become an instrument of our holiness. Uh, Dr. Paul Thigpen, he has a, a quote from St. Augustine. He says this quote, St. Augustine says, Job was turned over to the devil to be tempted so that by withstanding the test, Job would become a torment to the devil. St. Augustine, I'll repeat it again because it's right in line with what you're saying. St. Augustine, Job was turned over to the devil to be tempted so that by withstanding the test, Job would become a torment to to the devil there it is it's what you said we, we, we and when we offer our, our, our pains up uh we're forcing the demon to become an instrument yeah. of our sanctification yeah yeah oftentimes when we're dealing with cases of, of diabolical affliction the people come and they're so beaten down that the demon is is, is interior to them we said in the army the, the demon's inside the wire and, and we can know after our, our first meeting, we know, yeah, we got a live one here. We got somebody inside the wire, meaning the demon is, is, is present to the interiority of the person. And so once that happens through various, you know, uh, occult practices, uh, grave, you know, mortal sins, perpetrated, et cetera. Um, once that happens, then now the person, the battle's interior and they, the demon is projecting, projecting, projecting. By the time they get to us, you know, w- w- you know they cycle into our lives. These people have been so beaten down that they don't even know what to do. They're, they can't even discern their own thoughts from di- diabolic projections. Remember, the angels communicate through illumination. So the demon gets interior and starts projecting um, a disillumination. Let me finish that thought after the break. You got it. Jesus 911. That means Jesus, come to our assistance. You're listening to Justin J- Tan, Two Man Car. We're first responders. That's what we are. We're trying to respond uh, to the need in the body of Christ, which is. Uh, uh, the life of holiness. We'll be right back. Help the Helpless, a Minnesota St. Paul nonprofit organization chaired by Father of Tear and volunteers, is humbly asking you. For your kind support to help the poor and the handicapped children in India and Ecuador. Through financial support from the help of the helpless benefactors, the children are provided with clothing, food, education, shelter, and the teachings of the Catholic Church. The mission is to help children thrive and become self-sufficient young adults leading productive lives. We also provide aid to poor families in Ecuador with food baskets, medicines, medical assistance, and help with funeral needs for the deceased. The work in India is done by Father Antonio's organization, St. Mary's. In Ecuador, the work is being done by the Servant Sisters of the Home of Mother. You can call us at 877-762-8857. To learn more, please visit our website, www.helpthehelpless.org. God bless you. Our nation is too full of those that are crying down. Down with the police, down with the churches, down with teachers, down with government. Can you build anything down? You cannot. Certainly time in our nation to change our words. And let's begin now to use the word up. Up from all of this filth, up from this violence, up from this indifference of courts, up. Up to the hid battlements of eternity. Up, up to God. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US1. Just live it. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888 526 2151. Soul Patrol, Jesus 911. What does that mean, Jesus 911? It means, Lord, come to our assistance. That's what a 911 call God is. God, make haste to help assistance me. Assistance yeah. call. 
That's right. That's what we're doing. That's just that's a vernacular way of saying, Lord, God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help that's me. That's right. It's a, it's a blue collar way of saying that prayer, Dan. Yeah, Precisely. it is. Hey, we're listening, we're listening to the demonic. To, we listened to the demonic today with Fulton Sheen. A couple of things that jumped out. He said, he said, I mean, Dan, this is back in the seventies. He says this with the Vatican council, sent of the spirit upon the council. Uh, he said something that Pope the Council, he said, uh, the smoke of has entered into a crevice to the church saying the same thing here, that whatever council, obviously the devil said, OK, spread my uh, I'm going to uh, infiltrate and and, and uh, is here to spread like Fulton. She says the dim upon the world. And he said also something which I guess it doesn't apply to me. He wrote, we never hear of the demonic spiritual writers. He says the moral things have dropped the satanic. Only the poets, psychiatrists, and the scriptures talk about the demonic. So he's being critical of theologians in his in his day and age. They don't talk about this. They talk about everything else. You know, any uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, that's your navel. Everything else they talk about. But yeah, Myers. Uh, you know, what's happened was spirituality, authenticity, uh, and the tradition of the church has been replaced. With, you know, Myers Briggs psychological profiles. Um, we've we've let modern science and modern psychology kind of fuse into spirituality and kind of suck the life. Of it. I, that's why I think returning back to our our big, uh, uh, you know, Catholic Catholic traditions, Catholic spirituality, as Saint Paul says in Ephesians six, our weapons are not of the world, and what we battle against are not uh, flesh and blood. The, the weapons that we battle against are are. Uh, um, you know, we use spiritual weapon and the spiritual warfare is the offering. He uses the phrase katabasis or descent. Um, this is this 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 goes back uh, an early church father, Saint Irenaeus, um, trade if not trade through Polycarp to the apostle. Um, so he's he he and and uh, rolled so to speak in the one phase. Um, great dot great 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 church um, said that he's. Um, Katabasis and soon soon katabasis and ana. What does this mean? Um, to go to lowered himself. He went down in. He he took on human form and then he he did, but he didn't stop there. In some socio political economic way, he took human flesh so that human flesh may take on divinity. He raises us up, and so we follow that same path of descent and raising up. We don't we don't just try to meet and relieve symptoms. Uh, of those who are afflicted, we into the muck and the mire. I forget uh, John Cardinal Daniel Liu. I mud splashed through history. The this is the uh, the Humvee off road that you cannot bottom this, and it just gets mud splashed and search and put for souls. This is the image that comes to go into the the the, the broken human condition, bring Christ there for ourselves there. This is what the the lay upon for to offer ourselves and participate. This is why we're not having we don't have a ministry that's proper. Need. We have an apostle that we share in the apostolic in the church. We lower ourselves as we go in and we come back up. Um, so this is, and this is the, the 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 translation is relation that all things get recapitulated. Christ, this is how we're going. To, we have to go back to a crystal focus to understand who Christ is to 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 defeat our enemy. Christ has already defeated him. We have to we have to unite ourselves to him. Follow the same path that he followed. This is this is where our victory is going to be. I'll tell you somebody who basically lived out that katabas is, for example, somebody like Saint Mother Teresa. I yeah, mean, you know she en- yeah she entered entirely into into the you know this world into you know, the underworld and she would lift people up and bring them to Christ in our century that's a perfect example of who basically lived out this kat- uh, Fulton Sheen was talking about he mentioned again <clears throat> he said that more have dropped the satanic only the interest and the scriptures talk about the demonic he also said that we, uh, he says we lean to theology psychiatry and psychology and uh, he says, but the problem, bruh, natural. It's supra. Problem, it, on bruh. the natural. These are, we're yeah. dealing with and preter natural things. Uh, and so, so this is beyond the natural, not fight with natural realms. This is, this is angry, aggressive young fighter that has business in the ring with a world-class world champion. So, because we're dealing with supernatural entities. So we have, we have to fight um, with, with the means of the church, the sacraments, you know, every time at mass, when, when you hear, when you hear the, the, uh, um, the, the, you know, the, the, the sort of your hearts, it's like when we, a Cobra pilot, we would, the, your shoulders, they came up and they locked in yourself in, you prepared for battle, you prepared, 
that the enemy may have shot at you that so it's like here we go we strap in this you know, focus our minds and this is all of our intentions up all of our our worries all of our concerns and over society our cities our churches um our prayers for the holy father our prayers for our pastors um this is where we do it in union with the offering of christ this is a, a, a very spirituality but it's eucharistic centered and it's, it's returning to the centrality of Christ, eucharistic adoration and eucharistic spirituality offering up with the ultimate sacrifice of christ lowered himself Amen. even further than being human he did another layer of of catabasis and became dead he became physical and spiritual food for us i mean that's that's mind-blowing if you really try to wrap, becomes man and then becomes feast and receive off his real presence. I mean, it's this is the key. This is the secret. We have Eucharistic, uh, 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 a, a receptive Eucharistic prayerful posture. Well, that's the ultimate what, Le, or what our Lord Jesus Christ did for for us. And yeah. <laughs> Dan, I'm going to quote for here. He says, sp- "Talk sciences." He said this in a, a wolf in sheep's clothing. He said, "So psych- psychology, psychiatry, born as a result of the French Revolution." which promoted an anti super bias, which says that now everything has a natural solution and a rat answer. Fulton Sheen, Father Mitch Pacwa, same thing. This is humanism trying to re- replace theology. Theology we know from Catholic teaching, it's the queen of the sciences. But again, the devil has, has basically inverted reality, and now he's made, uh, through the French Revolution, through Marxism, through socialism, he's made psychiatry, He's made it uh, above and beyond theology. And after Vatican II, in fact, Vatican II, the the spread of the demonic upon the world, I believe the spread of the demonic world after Vatican II, in my opinion, at modernism, jizing scripture, uh, the the crazy radical historical critical scripture, just destroying the meaning of what he says. Uh, You also have uh, just uh, uh, this... uh, reductionistic view man centered instead of god centered these are some demonic things that came about during the 60s because the council was occurring during the vietnam war it was during the sexual revolution it was in the woodstock concerts it was occurring uh, the the huge homosexual uh riots called the stone the stone Wall in in greenwich village uh that was a come out party the homosexuals uh, the Church of Safeties, the Satanic Bible was written in the 60s. Griswold versus Connecticut, the legal. A lot of bad things happened. And that's what I think that full thought. Right after the council, you know, I mean, the church, in some measure, used the Supreme Court and bad policy world leaders to, to spread the demonic, some of the things that I just mentioned. What do you say? Sure, we see the, the ultimate is the is the authority. Uh, he quoted Nietzsche as well. You know, Nietzsche is a famous saying, God is dead. God means the life of man. This is this, the, again, in the French Revolution, uh, and et cetera. Um, one of the rallying cries, they replace statues, by the way. They would tear statues down, mm. and they would replace Christian statues with statues of reason, you know. Uh, and one of the battle cries, be, be courageous enough to use your own reason. One, one uh, Protestant biblical scholar at that time said, you can no longer— longer turn on, flip us and the light comes on and believe in the presence of angels so this is kind of infused mm. our own theological view so you see the rejection of the supernatural rejection of the mystical combined with authority and we're seeing this we're seeing this in the rejection of all authority we want an- anarchy is that a narcos no hierarchy no rule it's a lack of at lack um and so and so this this is we're living kind of in do you think nietzsche had a lot well i i, I would actually call nietzsche for colleges and universities, he's probably there. He's probably a part of the list of the modern settlers for secularists. I would say Carl Frederick Nietzsche, Sigmund Freud, Jean Paul Sartre. Uh, in fact, the one that described religion as an opiate of the people, and and it's these names: Dan, Marx, Nietzsche, Freud, Jean Paul Sartre, teach humanism, which is Luciferian. When uh, when everything just just man centered and God has uh, he's not part of the equation. This is what's being taught to a lot of a lot of our young kids in the in the high schools and universities. We wonder why we have this diabolical intensity of Black Lives Matter, Antifa, and other uh, other groups out there. Actually, said it. We'll talk about it in the next segment. Best lack all conviction are filled with passion and Jesus nine one one. Lord, come to our assistance. Dr. Dan Schneider, Jess Romero.
Hi, this is Jenner from the Terry and Jesse Show, also from Jesus 911. Let's face it, we all use the internet, but we need screen accountability. Why? Pornography is a huge problem, especially on the internet. And every time we tap into the internet, we get bombarded with images and temptations that grade our humanity. So we need come die to block these pornographic sites and advertisements from infiltrating our lives. Covenant Eyes helps us take custody of our eyes to let. So I recommend you go to Covenant and type in the promo code, the M Network. Protect yourself from the eminent threats on the internet. www.covenanteyes.com Code VM Live Porn. Thank you for listening to Virgin Most. Thank you. God bless you. Keep the faith. in Luke 17 when you have done that you were ordered to do say we are profitable servants we have only done our according to St. John of the Cross God is pleased with the little deeds we do in secret he takes more pleasure in these than in a multitude of grand works that we may do out of the desire to be seen by others may God help us do the things that please him and not just appear great in the eyes of others Buying or selling business property? This is Terry Barber. Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. We connect you to one of 900 pre agents around the world. And when they furrow fee, they will give 80 to a pro-life organization. That's 80%. Realestlife.org, 877-US1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. G. Roll, Lord, come to our assistance. I'm going to ask you, what do you think about Archbishop Sandy of Portland? He did the Exodus and Fallen Angels. That's chapter 3, prayer. Uh, give on why a bishop would do something like that, the effector. Uh, and uh, would he did that, or should he have just stand, stand down? No, the, the Eucharistic procession. If you look into the tradition of the, the Eucharistic procession, litanies, um, and and prayers against the diabolic that helped, um, particularly rough times, time of, of epidemic, pandemic, etc. So digging into the bag of arsenals, uh, the, the, uh, the the arsenal down to the armory, the weapons he needs for this particular battle, and I think he has done absolutely done, has done the right thing. The, it, what's going to be interesting to see if this continues, if he does it a few more times. Um, there will be some positive effect. Uh, you know, um, St. Paul says, our, our fighting uh, a, a human, our weapons, uh, we are fighting principalities, the forces uh, um, in the air, he, he says. So, so spiritual forces. So he, this is, this is a, this is like a spiritual, this is, this is, this is a Tomahawk missile launched from a nuclear sub or from, from a carrier, um, not a carrier, but a, a warship, you know, this is a big time art, big time bomb drop. And it's going to, it's going to have a ripple effect, uh, spiritually in the spiritual realm. And it'll, it, it'll most likely, uh, carry a lot of weight and start to bring, um, loosen up things at a, at a deeper level. I think it's just very beautiful. And I think it's excellent that, that some of our bishops are, are starting to do that. I think they're starting to recognize, yeah, this is, uh, you know, dialogue is not working, you know, um, trying to dialogue with with uh, anarchists, it doesn't work. You know, you have to you have to go to the root of the problem. I think it's fantastic that a bishop of the of, of the church. It's very powerful. I can just tell you, you hold up a a, a person who is, uh, is again who's got a, a diabolic entity interior to himself. You hold up a picture of the local bishop. You'll you'll watch. You'll get a physical visual re, visceral reaction, if not a manifestation. Just the very picture. The image of the bishop, uh, because the demon recognizes the authority, the spiritual authority of that individual. So same thing here. When a bishop does it, and not just as exorcist, exorcist or as priest, it's very, very effective. Dan, in chapter 3, who can pray chapter 3, uh, the exorcism against Satan and fallen angels? Is it a restricted prayer? 
Yeah, because it's part of the uh, – because it's embedded into the Roman ritual, and Pope Benedict, when he was prefect of the Congregation of the Faith, wrote a letter of clarification. So that prayer is something that is reserved for the priest. Again, it's a high-flash weapon, so to speak, and if you pray that as a layman, um, you're outside of your authority, and is, you know, it'll, it will work. Don't get me wrong. It's something that will work, but it also can bring retaliation. So there's other prayers that lay people should be doing. This is a prayer – again, it's like – think of it this way. You and I were going to say grace before our meals, and we decide to start praying the Eucharistic prayer, um, it's just not not appropriate. That prayer is reserved for the priest uh, to pray during Mass at a specific time with authority. In some dioceses, um, the bishop gives all priest authority to pray what's called Chapter 3, which is the, the prayer against fallen angels um, of St. Michael that was given to Pope Leo Thirteenth after a vision of hell. Um, so so um, that prayer, is re- since it's embedded into a ritual only reserved for priests, which is the ritual of exorcism, that prayer is specifically reserved for the priesthood. And, and, and anyone that the priest, any priest that, <coughs> excuse me, at the, <coughs> that the bishop designates. Dan, let me ask you a question. <coughs> Fulton Sheen talked a lot about Nietzsche. Here's what he said. I want to get your comments. We know that Nietzsche, by the way, he lived from 1844 to 1900. He fashioned a, a, a philosophical <laughs> rebellion against God and against you know all accepted Christian morality at the time, and he also came up with the, with this name this name of Superman, you know, uh, uh, Uberman, you know, yeah, the, yeah, the Superman about somebody who would be free from all restraints on his behavior, and he would create his own truth, and he's the one that proclaimed that God was dead, and that the human being alone is sovereign. Here's what Fulton Sheen also says. He says after Nietzsche wrote his book on the Antichrist, he went mad thumping the keys i'm I'm assuming the piano keys because he was also a musician and shouting against the person of christ the next 11 years he lived as a madman until he died but he the devil makes a madman say that god is dead and the madman asks, what made us strong enough to kill god with all the waters of the ocean will will all the waters of the ocean cleanse our guilt how can we wipe our sword with his blood the only way you can overcome the killing of God is by making a new God. So in the last, in the last uh, latter part of the book of Nietzsche, the madman falls silent. He throws his lantern on the ground, which breaks to pieces. He says, it is not my time. Uh, fill in the blanks. Do you think Nietzsche is a big problem? Uh, he's a big part of the problem with what's being taught right now in the colleges and universities, this, uh, this focus on secular humanism? Well, sure. I think, again, we go back to Scripture. We have – think about um, Paul and Barnabas in Acts 14. I want to do a little short little thing on uh, epiphany. What does this mean? They they heal the sick. They're per, in, in, uh, uh, they're in Greek ter- Greek-speaking territory trying to get converts, and they say the gods have come down in human form. Um, the same word, katabasis, uh, is in the Greek of that New Testament passage. In the Maccabees, Second Maccabees, we see uh, um, Antiochus IV, epiphanes. Um, this word epiphanes, where we get the word epiphany, means the God, the, a God has come in human form. And think about the context. So, so uh, Antiochus IV, um, t- they, they, they desecrate the temple with the abomination of abominations, placing an idol uh, inside the temple of the living God and placing himself as God, God in human form. Um, and what was going on at that time? A time of great apostasy, um, of slaughter of the innocent. Um, outlawing of liturgical and other ritual uh, ecclesial traditions among the Jewish people. Same thing um, that's happening today. Ordering uh, the order of worship of false gods and socio economic and civil unrest. And so we see the death of God, so called, um, with the rise of man. And so, and, 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 then, and then jump forward to at, or John 21. It says, Jesus appeared to his disciples. And this is how Jesus appeared to his disciples. The same word phaneo or phan oo or phan This is a this is a, a word meaning uh, to appear, to reveal yourself. Um, and it's also th- this this particular word. It's, it's th- this type of word is causative. What does this mean? That means Jesus is the cause. He makes himself he makes himself visible. What was hidden? The true God 
has now revealed himself to the apostles in this way. He, he, the, the invisible God now made visible and resurrected. Jesus is active agent and now in a visible manner. And so we see this contrast. There's a constant diabolic inversion or trying to supplant that in some supernatural way to divert our attention from the fact that God 2,000 years ago took on human flesh, became one of us, born of a virgin, everything we believe in the creed. And he and he died on the cross, very basic. He suffered and died for us. And then he appeared in physical form and he ate bread and they saw they touched him. They 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 tasted uh, they they saw him eat fish and bread and and continued a physical existence. God in human form, the true God in human form. And the diabolic is constantly trying to supplant that. And so the death of God means that man can now in some find himself freed from the shackles of authority. Ultimately, this is an anarchic movement to free ourselves of the holy rule, higher archos, the holy rule of God, um, the holy rule of the Trinity, and now in and through the holy rule or priestly rule of the church. This is what's being militated at, at, at the ultimate level. And when this bishop, this wonderful bishop in Portland does this, wow, what a powerful move this was. I mean, this was this was a drop the mic moment on, in the spiritual realm. The angels were rejoicing and they were there doing battle. They put, I guarantee you, the angels Angels put an orbis formation around that bishop and, and, and now have been invited in. Remember, prayer begets what it signifies. And the authority helps. It, it, this, the, like you and I could have dropped a tow missile on a bunker and it would just bounce off the concrete. But a bishop has bunker busting authority, and he will bun- he will break through the bunkers with this types of prayer. And I encourage these, you know, all these priests and bishops to continue that. And we support you as laymen. We're out there, man. We're on the we're on the front lines. We're first responders, and we're we're just foot soldiers and grunts in the army of Christ. And we support this. This is fantastic stuff. Yeah, good. That's really good news. And he's not the only bishop that's done this. Some a couple of bishops in Mexico, Latin America, some other bishops in this country as well, and and other priests are doing chapter three from their parishes as well. Uh, a lot of them are just kind of quiet about it. You know, they don't, uh, they're just, they know God is basically, and the angels are witnessing what they're doing. But there's more people doing chapter three, uh, priests and, and bishops, than we know about, Dan. Dan, last thing that Fulton Sheen said, the, 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 the best lack all conviction while the worst are filled with passion and intensity. We have to step up our game. Uh, the only thing that I would say is that the watchword for the third millennium in my in my book is, just keep repeating throughout the day, Jesus, I trust in you. That way you don't fall into despair. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. And pray especially to Our Lady of Victory, the Mother of God. Remember at the Battle of Lepanto in 1571, the odds were against the Catholic Christian fleet. And the odds were so great against us that Las Vegas would have taken that, that bet off the board. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, no, the, the Vegas wouldn't, they, they would have taken it off the board. Yeah, this, this wouldn't even have been close. Yeah. Yeah, but again, no, no doubt. They, I mean, they were outnumbered. Um, the Christian, the Christian fleet was outnumbered like five to one or ten to one, some outrageous number. Um, but but God likes those numbers. Gideon was outnumbered like three hundred to one. I mean, it was crazy. But God likes those numbers. That way, He knows He makes manifest Himself. He will manifest Himself through us. When otherwise, if we did it all ourselves, it would be oh look what we did, and then we no longer need God. It's we, going to be a small we, we Gideon's patting army. Patting ourselves on the back. What's that? Yeah, we'd be patting ourselves on the back. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's our and that's, nature. And I'll tell you right now, it looks like 301. President Trump versus a small, you know, uh, social media, uh, mainstream media, colleges, universities, uh, the, the Democrat Party, communists, socialists, Hollywood elites, entertainers, actors, uh, many in the sports world. It's really right now, this is, we're back to, to Gideon, you know, 300 men. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or, or yeah. even the three hundred, the the, the battle, the, the you know the battle of three hundred King the, of Thermopylae, um, hot springs King Leonidas, basically. King and so three hundred guys fought off a million, and and the prediction was, and this is this is historical, not just in that crazy movie, but this is historical. They said during the pre battle negotiations, they said we will darken the sun with our arrows, and one of one of uh, Leonidas's warriors said, then we will fight in the shade. You know, and so wow. we have to realize that we're fighting in the shade. They are darkened the sun with the arrows, but we're still going to keep fighting because this is what God has asked us to do. Fight for our families, for our homes, for our parishes. You know, just keep plugging along. Don't give up. And one of the things, too, is that 
confess it. Confess a despair. Confess a, a lack of hope. You know,、um, get deeper in your confessions, and and, and don't give in to that depression, despair.、Uh, um, you know, oh, this doesn't matter.、Um, you know,、um, lethargy. Ah, forget it. You know, because that's what Fulton Sheen was saying: is that that the the good guys are just like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Forget it. And the bad guys have passion and zeal, and they're out there doing. Then we're they're, we're they're out, the music is here. That's a wrap, my friend. Up next, Gary Majuda. Don't turn that dial. Hands on apologetics. Hey, God is not dead. Nietzsche's dead. God's not <laughs> dead. He's not even tired. See you next time. God bless. Keep the faith. Lord, come to our assistance. Saint Faustina's prayer for priests. O、oh、my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole Church, grant it love and the light of thy Spirit. And give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance, and return to Thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests; Thou Thyself maintain them in holiness. O divine and great High Priest, may the power of Thy mercy accompany them everywhere, and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of Thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For Thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin most powerful, pray for us.